It wouldn't fit in the trap. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Listen carefully. Oh, well, that didn't help. Mm. Approach carefully. take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soak in your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Look behind you. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. The lieutenant's mouth is agape. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Mm, raise your other hand too? As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you. Praying to you. Ooh. Uh, don't pray to me. I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. Oh, that's very it nice. It towers it. above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Whisper. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like Ooh, the blade of a sword. Nice picture. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. Mm -hmm. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds and sky. And you, as a shadow before it. For all time. Mm. 
<laughs> Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Mm, look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Mm, lick, lick the finger? It tastes like sugar. Very faint. The anthropod towers above you. Tufts of reeds pointing from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. Um, pull your hand away. A sudden shiver passes the limb. Looks like the creature is awakening. Wave by wave from its stupor. Some sort of countdown process is happening. That's all you have time to think. Okay, we got it. Back off. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Whisper. Kim, it's foaming. Careful. It may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Okay. Tell me, what are you doing? I eat. Hmm. I exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. Mm. I'm ill. What is your illness? Mm. I'm ill in my heart. For me, it's sadness. Input after input. For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience excitement and unexpected sugar rewards. But that is not important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient. Deep. Moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an air funnel. Weightless. So light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. 
You're the type of animal I would like to be. Are you sure? Mm. Yes, I'm sure. Why do you ask? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced the missing antenna. Ah... Uh, that's cool. No, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now? Yes. Thankfully someone ate it. <laughs> the next time I mold it, I grew an antenna again. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? The killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him. But I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly. And only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the picture in your head. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Mm, is this a dream? What is happening? No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this? All of us? The world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. Mm. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer? You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, <laughs> you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or read. Wait, so... So you look like a reed, and you eat reeds. Yes, they don't mind. Um, have you ever accidentally eaten another reed transmit? Yes, I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter, and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. Whoops. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia endemic to the Insulindia Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. So it's been playing with boys. Uh, does that mean that it stole um, Classia's documents? I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the <laughs> cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. That's insane. No, you are. Uh, the yeah. moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness, a volatile senior nerve system, Ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? 
We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? What we'll just forget? Um, but I want to blink and undo 12 billion years of matter expansion. Sing me and butcher. Soon. One of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. Mm, then I think I'm having a vision. About the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? Uh... Sort of. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. Mm, I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. Mm. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the most beautiful. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For all mankind. What woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, he smells of fires. So awfully far he will prepare to go in her presence. And it. I will try. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Well. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with his hand raised to his brow. Mm. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. He shakes his head with amazement. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Mm. We do. But we also have to loot stuff. Ooh, Klausia's passport. So, it was as I suspected. For all. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Yeah. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. Mm. At least my collector's impulse has been satisfied. Indeed, you found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. Mm, at least now I'm truly invincible. Right. Uh, if we put it on, which 
weird. Mm. Let's have a look at Klasia's passport. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Oranje, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katarzyna Alazier. Klasia's hidden documents from the MT boy. Look at the photo. It's Klasia with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. An old photo, before life came and did what it does. Mm, what was this doing in the Phasmid's nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius, or whatever her name was, hiding place, or... Mm. The Phasmid took it. I sensed it do it. I saw something open the boy with spindly legs point to your head. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. By now, the lieutenant has accepted your <laughs> unusual methods. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it. But to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. Would it? Maybe it was simply curious. Mm. Perhaps it was curious, like an octopus. An octopus belongs to a very different class. It's not even an insect, it's a mollusk. But yes, I see your point. It says... Katarzyna Alasia. Did I say that right? She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Mm. Anouk Meyer Smith. Katarzyna Alasia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klasia comes from, remember? God damn it. I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone <laughs> else right now, in another city. Mm. Maybe this is her real passport, not a fake? Because this is her real name. No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she's managed to lie to us about that too. He almost smiles. What's her real name, then? I don't know, but it's not Katarzyna Alasia, or Klasia, or Anouk Meyer smith We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. God damn it. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. Put the passport away. We'd better check on the suspect, yes? What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking with fear and longing. Mm. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Mm, what has happened to this man? Old age and shock. Mm, I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Mm. I talked to the phasmid. It said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, detective. Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Mm. Maybe. Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Mm. Also... Please be careful when approaching a known species in the future, detective. <laughs> Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed to be 
strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid? It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Mm. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. <laughs> Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. When he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. Mm, maybe that's how the Phasmid has stayed hidden in these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yes, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is uh, a little advance for a nurse. I hope so too. Could it be that there's something hormonal in his relationship with the plasma? You mean pheromonal? Ah! Uh, he seemed a little off for a man of his age. Brandy. The scope, knowing of her bruises, his disposition toward Miss Oranya. I see what you mean. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it's in its company. Uh -huh. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him, like he didn't want to leave this place, and the insect maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. He shakes his head This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. We found some things in the Fazbear's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps mm. you should... Tap on the helmet on your head? Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. The last embers have gone out. The war is over. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the air would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. Or the Phasmid, even. If it did, this is incredible. Mm, show him the Orangist passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? The spirit. He blinks and continues to stare at the reeds. He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. Show him the detached scope. I... I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid, the lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out mm. of this poor being. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. A plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. Oh, 
one last thing to do before we go. The greasy old spring mattress lies in the corner. Fresh linen under the heavy caracal cover. The offer still stands. Take it, you don't look so good. The bed is quite inviting, all things considered. It's much warmer inside than out there. Maybe a little shut eye, just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. You didn't realize how tired you were. Your body is still nowhere near healed. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... Until? You feel yourself standing up in the darkness, right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. The lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside to the beach. Uh, this is not outside, is it? <laughs> this door is closed. Like you never opened it. Down to the chain, there's something there. Chain. There it is. We're into the water now. What is this? You feel her footprints on the water. What? They're walking on water like a thousand further. Seems to be some kind of car. Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Okay. Don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go? This is the Holy Queen of the territories of Mwindi and Insulinda. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to win her back. Something is off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She stops mid-sentence, glances to her right, then looks at her bag. She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. Mm, you don't have time to tend to my emotions? <sighs> she sighs and looks over her shoulder. What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. <laughs> mm, what's in the bag? Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, 
The crown of immortality. Crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. She corrects the wreath on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say, then over her shoulder. Anyway. Mm. Can, uh, where are you going? I'm going to Morova, to live there in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive, epic showdown. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? She looks at you plaintively. We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. So... Our girlfriend was Dolores Day? It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell. Forever. That's just the way it is. Pleasant. Oh God, whatever you do, don't try to kiss her yet. Mm, Not okay. after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try it now. Okay. I brought you this figurine of a headless foam rider. I don't want it. It looks expensive. I don't want it. I thought you liked figurines. I thought the figurines were going were for getting you back. That's not what figurines do, Harry. But then the figurines don't do anything. She looks at the headless found rider between your fingers and doesn't know what to say. The figurines don't do anything? Anything at all? But I thought the historic figure she had... She liked war games and figurines. Yes, I thought it would be good. A form of communication where words have failed. Yes, it was a good idea. But she felt mm. obliged by the headless phone rider to give you things in return. Things she no longer wants to give you. So she refused. That's how it goes. Your figurine rider idea was naive. Maybe this revolutionary figure then. Show it to her. Maybe you can take this revolutionary figurine? It's got a little musket. No, please. Please don't give me anything. What about dice? I had some custom dice made in this place. A doomed commercial area. Harry, I don't want things. I want to go to the aerodrome. Okay, I won't give you things then. I didn't ask for things. It's too late to give me anything. I would have liked these things a long time ago. The headless Von Rider especially. But now, only boring hell remains. Mm. But that's not a very good way for things to be. It's not. But... She looks at her feet. Little golden sandals cover her toes. But what? Tell me there's something good. I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it? That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it, just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. Where in hell? Stop. You're only making it worse for him. You never help with anything. Mm. Maybe. I think I've reached the end of my investigation. See? It just takes some time. For you, I think it'll take something like 20 years, maybe. It was hard for me, too. 
I used to think I couldn't live without you. She looks you straight in the eye. Her irises are light blue, flecked with green. But I can. She keeps her shoulders squared and her back straight. But it's clear you're still making her sad. Mm, 20 years? That's so much time. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. So you felt that way once, that you cannot live without me? Yes. But that time is gone now. So very gone. Your innocence, Dolores Day? I'm sorry I made you sad. It's okay. Mm. Okay then. Super okay. I still have other things I need to know. What other things? We've mm. been through all the things, Harry. Should we kiss her? You're not even human. I am actually very ordinary, Harry. Below this gown and wreath, I have an ordinary soul and ordinary thoughts. The only thing inhuman about me is this. She looks around. This thing you've made me into. I'm sorry for saying so, but I just hate it. What is this? This is so far gone, Harry. I don't even... Mm. But you're special. You have glowing lungs. My lungs do not glow, Harry. I am just like all the others. None of us have glowing lungs. Stop making me into some kind of... Mm, you're right. You don't have glowing lungs. You don't deserve them. I didn't ask for them either. <laughs> They're just a folk tale that has nothing to do with my reign. Or the direction I have set our species on. She glances over her shoulder and back at you. You couldn't make her lungs glow anyway. Only cry. And maybe not even that anymore. Mm. Should we try to kiss her? Okay. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid, and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. Mm, that's not good. But I succeeded. This was not about failure or success. This was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. Okay. You're not kissing me back? The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours, trying hard not to look at you. When she withdrew and you held on to her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. Mm, that's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. She slides her hands down her chest and onto the lo her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. What? Um... Swallow. You know what this means. Um... It's not mine. Of course not. She looks down at her belly and then up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember? You poor fuck. Poverty-stricken fuck. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. More questions. Ask more. Um, maybe, maybe now's the time to go into the mass murderer thing. That is very contested by modern historians. Very contested. 
plus. She tramples her little feet for warmth and abs. You're only saying this because things didn't work out between us. I have to go to the aerodrome now. I don't have time to defend myself from these accusations. Stop making her angry. She won't start loving you again if you call her a mass murderer. Seriously. Mm. Oh, I think I'll go for this slightly aggressive one. Would you say you haven't behaved like a mass murderer with me? You were very bad to me too. We've talked about it like seven million times now. I don't want to do that anymore. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. I'm gonna go now. Her fingers wrap around the bag handle. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. Mm. Hold on. What is there to do in Morova? Light. Life. Culture. It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you. And the horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me and be clean again. I want to be a good person again. Not this. Not what you made me into. Mm. But I swore I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. That was someone else. I betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. She turns. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry, this is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Blimey. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young. And I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time, so long ago. Mm, I like this. Oh yes, this is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. Was you sleep? Mm. <laughs> Just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're a badass like that. Okay. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. Okay. Um. Where was the exit? Mm. Ah, right, up there. I'm confused because in my dream it wasn't that. Mm, 
Kim, what is the ICM? Insulindian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communal Army, the black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. RCM, it sounds like RCM. Revocal Citizen Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revash always was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rushed <laughs> through your neocortex. A mediocre athlete would pants and dragon around his body on a busted crutch. But not you. You're thinking about politics with blood dripping down your thigh. Mm. It's a little embarrassing in 51, no? Maybe we need a rebrand. No one remembers the ICM. The connotation is less important each year. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star? Point to the star on the label. No, an upside down star. With its horns in the sky, the symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. It looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Yefreiter. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. We get out of here. Yes, this is the way. Here we go. But I think we'll get onto that boat next time on Let's Play Disco Elysium. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again. Um. Please do help by liking, uh, leaving a comment, and um, subscribing if you would like to. Okay, farewell. Thank you to my epic patrons who make videos like these possible. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe.